This is Human Program, and today I want to talk to you about the dual VCO on the Electron Syntact. It's easily the least straightforward machine on the Syntact. It's an analog bass synth that's derived from analog drum synth circuitry, so it has a really unusual feature set. Today, I'm going to throw the waves up on the scope, explain its really unusual configuration settings, and then see how close we can get to a square wave and pulse width modulation sounds, and then share a few other tricks for making common sounds. Okay, so first, the waves. Our default wave is two sine saws, as the manual calls them, and they're detuned an octave. I'm going to go ahead and tune them back. And we have two oscillators that in the first configuration balance each other. So that's the single sine saw. On the first oscillator, we have that sine saw sound and a sine. The second oscillator has a, a sine, what they call a skewed sine. which has slightly different harmonics, a triangle wave, what they call a sine saw, and then a sawtooth wave. Now, two things to mention right off the bat is first, the octave range. It goes fairly high, um, but to get to the seventh, sixth and seventh octaves, you need to do the tuning up at least one octave. And then in certain situations, it's going to either cut out or go out of tune. The circuitry, like the Moog Minotaur, seems to only track over a few octaves. That's normal for this synth. The second thing is phase reset. That's these little dots that are at the very start of the waveforms here. The oscillator phase reset is not oscillator sync, uh, unfortunately, that would be cool, but rather a phase reset that adds a slight transient at the beginning of the waves. So if you're using a pad sound, for instance, you're going to want to make sure you're in a configuration that doesn't have that sync. In the configurations, we have all of the mixes and you can, of course, uh, use different harmonies. Uh, octaves. Next we have the ring mod. Now this is the first point where I think it can be a little bit confusing because the, the balance parameter does something a little bit different. The ring modulation carrier is on the left. So when you hear the ring mod and that has that classic bell-like or distortion-like sound is when you detune up an octave But you've also got kind of sweet spots on the seven, which is a really nice distorted sound. Also on the, uh, when you go to the sign or the uh, saw sign. It's a nice uh, kind of distorted sound, and you can mix in the you can mix in the upper tone as well. Sounds pretty cool. 
minus seven and minus 12 and zero are also good spots on the, the ring modulator. Now, FM gets a little bit more complicated because here we have a single oscillator that we hear, and I think it's oscillator one. And so when you have it balanced on the left, you don't hear anything from oscillator two. And then as you change the balance, oscillator two will increasingly frequency modulate your sound. And so that's shaping your wave. It's got some unstable spots, depending on where you are, around the middle point. So it can be easy to, you know, be flipping through these configuration settings and, f and feel like you've got a note that's sort of sour or that... Usually the way to fix that is you can just move your balance a little bit and that will take it away. Also, the pitch is going to follow oscillator 2. When you use the decay on oscillator 2, you're going to be able to hear there's a decay envelope around the frequency modulations. So you've got your ring modulation carrier on the left and you've got your FM amount on the right. Then for ring plus FM, you've got your, ring, your regular ring signal on the left, and then you've got that ring signal frequency modulated by carrier two as well on the right. And as you can see, again, around the zero spot is where you'll have more instability. Now, if we compare the same FM plus ring modulation with it's definitely modulating the ring modulated signal. So that's how all of the configurations work. And there are really a lot of sweet spots around different detunings, different balances to find. And one that I started looking for pretty quickly was how to get as close as we can to a square wave and pulse width modulation. So step one is that the beginning, your default setting with the saw signs, change that to triangle. The first thing you want to do is put on your overdrive. We haven't talked about that. That has a really nice kind of wave shaping capacity already. And it, it tends to make all of the waves kind of more squarish to begin with. So if you modulate the balance a little bit by about three or four. I've got the balance. We've already got a sound that's not so different from pulse width modulation. And we'll go ahead and this is, this is pulse width modulation on a square wave in the SY bits. I tried a few other things and a ring modulation also sounds quite good with this. And again, modulating the balance a little bit helps to change that wave shape just a little bit. We've got a few more higher frequencies. And to find kind of, I think the squarest of them all in the FM plus ring modulation, uh, adding FM is already kind of bending the wave shapes. So uh, modulating the balance on that gives us a very square-ish kind of a waveform. Yeah, here we are up higher. The sawtooth definitely has those uh, even harmonics in it. But then when you put some filter envelope on it. So I think that in the absence of an actual square wave with exactly those harmonics, this is a pretty, a pretty nice alternative. Okay, a couple of other sort of basic sounds and ideas. First, one of the obvious places to go with this is for acid bass lines. 
Captain Piquant did a terrific and very clear demonstration and guide on doing this with one of the, si the single sawtooth wave. And really, once you've got that, you're looking at you're looking at just moving your moving your filter. setting that you can turn in the menu to go uh, legato only. All you have to do to set a slide now is just overlap the timing on two notes and there will be a slide. You can get chorus, as I've mentioned in another video, by just modulating delay time. Delay time modulation of about 0.1. The delay time is between one and two. And then I've got the filter frequency also modulating nice and slowly with this, oh, I need the double notch filter and and we get that nice kind of Juno-like sound. I've got a couple of, I guess, sort of cheap tricks for making distortion. One is to use this uh, 16th detuning. And if we go to something like the sine saw with a triangle wave, that lets the triangle wave kind of imitate the upper harmonics that you would hear on a guitar amp. So You can also get some nice distortion with the ring mod at say negative seven or so. For one last trick, let's look at a kind of Hoover approximation, which I've done mostly with just sawtooth waves. Uh, the lowest one I've made a triangle. These are just octaves apart from each other. And then one thing I've done is to give it a little bit of noise rate modulation. This you can do by modulating the tune at 2000 times randomly. That's a lot, obviously. But if you do just a little bit, it adds a, a touch of noise to those two oscillators. For the other half of the Hoover, I've got a half cycle LFO here that makes the pitch envelope. And that's how you get. I think I'll leave, leave it there. I hope you have fun exploring some more of the sweet spots of the dual VCO. Thanks a lot for watching. See you next time.